I am a gigantic fan of Nintendo. I have loved them my entire life, and it is one of my favorite things in the world. I owe in a large part much of my childhood and upbringing to these games, and the cast of characters that still shape who I am to this day. I will never forget the Christmas that my brothers and I were treated to a Nintendo GameCube. It came with three games. Super Smash Bros. Melee, Super Mario Sunshine, and Luigi's Mansion. It's quite a lineup, seeing as how these are still three of my favorite games of all time. There will be a time to talk about all of that, but today's about Luigi's Mansion. I've been craving a worthy sequel to that game since I first received it. It was constantly referenced with music and stages and other party games and the like, and I remember thinking, okay, look, you know, they're still aware of this game, so where's Luigi's Mansion 2 already? Fast forward 12 years, my wish finally came true. And careful what you wish for, as they say. To save myself two reviews at once, I'll leave my opinion of Dark Moon as a personal disappointment. I'm aware that this isn't an unpopular opinion. So my restless wait for a worthy successor to Luigi's Mansion pressed on. In comes Luigi's Mansion 3. I had high hopes going in. The Switch seems to be a callback to the old school days of Nintendo with ultimate fan service. Take Breath of the Wild, Smash Ultimate, Mario Odyssey, all of these things taking what I've loved and building upon them. I felt that if there ever was to be a proper successor to Luigi's Mansion, this must be it. Welcome to the Art of Review. This is Luigi's Mansion 3. Just a fair warning, I'm going to be comparing this to the first game a lot. This is completely justified to me, the first game is one that I love dearly, and the only reason that a third exists is because of the legacy of the first one. As a sequel, it is cursed with being compared to its predecessor. If you think I'm being biased or unfair, it's my opinion and all my review really is just a biased subjective opinion anyway. I'm coming here as a fan of Luigi's Mansion and Nintendo. I'm not looking for a carbon copy, but something that carries on the spirit of what made the first so memorable. A righteous sequel. Let's see how it fares. Luigi, Mario, Peach, and a few toads are taking a vacation and stop at a fancy smancy hotel. Who is making this toad drive? He can barely see over the steering wheel. Look at this, they're gonna crash before they even get there. This does not seem even slightly safe. Yay, that's all right, Luigi. You all sit away in the back. Don't you dare move up another seat. All right, well, the only two that matter are now out of the bus. Screw the rest. Chopper, chopper, you dirty slaves. Bring our stuff into the hotel. Jeez, man, the toads are the absolute most abused subjects I've ever seen. Look at this. Even when you're supposed to be rescuing them, Luigi has no problem just shooting them into a brick wall. Just get a few coins. <laughs> oh, Luigi, you are so easily impressed. It's not that big. Holy! Right off the bat, one of the first things you notice is how absolutely stunning the visuals are in this game. Not that Nintendo ever really fails in this aspect, but they have really outdone themselves here. The Mario game has never looked better, and I would go so far as to say it's one of the best looking games on Switch. Not to mention the attention to detail that goes into this hotel is such a beauty to look through. Uh -huh. Let's go. Hey. Whoops. Uh -huh. Did Mario just bump into Luigi and not even think twice about it? I love how they they had to take the time to animate that specifically. They wanted Mario to just bump into him and not mention it at all. That's great. Real nice Mario. Okay. Bye. Okay. Nothing weird here. Yeah, right. Look at Mario pretending to go into his own room. Like, he's not going to sneak into the princesses as soon as Luigi's asleep. Night, night. Night, night. Haha, <laughs> enjoy your sleep. I'm going to sleep too, I swear. In the middle of the first night, they all get kidnapped, but Luigi evades escape. 
You know how it goes. Luckily, you find a poltergust in an old car down in the basement, which happens to be Gads. And thank God, because without him, we can't have our gimmick. Pretty much every Nintendo game is built around a nice new gimmick that establishes the core of the game. Take Flood or DK Barrels. Luigi's Mansion has the poltergust. Now that Luigi's purpose here has been established, the game can really begin. Nintendo's greatest strength is the immersion of their creativity. The worlds, characters, design, music, attention to detail, iconic imagery. Luigi's Mansion 3 does not disappoint here. The hotel is a cool idea, and it allows for an interesting way to present completely different and wild ideas into the same structure. The different floor designs are fun. It's very enjoyable to open the doors and see what Luigi's going to have to force his way through next. It starts off like any old hotel. You have the lobby, guest rooms, gift shop, but then it expands to a garden, medieval castle, Hollywood film set, to an Egyptian pyramid. It reminds me of Ghostbusters, how Dana opens the fridge and sees another world inside, like a portal. It's cool to see Luigi walking over to a giant pyramid or a huge pirate ship while realizing, wait, we're still in the hotel. I had fun taking back control of Luigi and spoiling King Boo's latest plot. But the longer the game went on, the more problems I seemed to find with it. Let's start with the enemies. The ghosts. They are essentially the gameplay. You can't play Call of Duty without shooting soldiers, and you can't play Luigi's Mansion without catching ghosts. After spending a while exploring around the mansion, trying to get a hold of how the game works and its new mechanics, I noticed a distinct lack of enemies. I figured it must be because I'm still early in the game and still sort of introducing the hotel. But after hours of playing, I still found myself wandering room to room and coming across ghosts on occasion. What happened? Not to mention the designs were so boring. Throughout the whole game, you just keep running into the same exact ghosts over and over again. Generic copy and paste. The main two you're going to see without any remorse from the developers are the blue goob and the red hammer. You get tired of these fast. They sometimes mixed it up, making goobs ballerinas or sharks with an extra layer added to defeat them. They had so much potential to do something cool here. Make some original ghosts or ballerinas or knights or sharks, whatever you wanted to do. Why keep reusing the goob over and over? And then when you really got tired of them, they mix it up a step further. The goob and the hammer, but uh, get this, stay with me. Miniature. Miniature? Really? How lazy can you get? In a game that pulls all the stops design-wise in certain aspects, such as the hotel, why stop at one of the most essential parts of the game? Ghosts are literally the whole reason for playing and what you're going to come across the entire time. And then you have the oozer and slinker. Oozer hides in objects, making you nudge him out, and slinker is invisible, and you need to search for him with the black light. I appreciate the variety, but battles that actually had these guys were few and far between. You have the Trapper, which I'm almost positive there are a total of four in the entire game. Then you can find Gold Ghosts and Crystal Ghosts, which just run around and give you coins or a gem. I'm aware there are rare ghosts, but these only exist in Scare Scraper, which I didn't play. Nobody really wanted to play with me, and whenever I signed on, I just wanted to complete the story. And by the time I was done, I just didn't really care enough to get any rare ghosts or go try any of the other modes. I highly doubt they would have significantly raised my opinion anyway, so I'm just fine leaving those tanks empty. Boos are back. They're a must in Luigi's Mansion. It's nice to see them return. It's definitely easier to catch them in this one than the first once you figure it out, though there is a significantly less amount here. I went back to catch all of them before the final floor but missed one of them, and I was still able to beat it, no problem. Kind of a pointless chore, which seems to be a main theme of this game, but I'll get to that. If you do beat them all, you get this silly little change to your flashlight, and... Oh man, actually, that's, that's pretty dope. I wish I finished my boo hunt. They brought back Portrait Ghosts, which is cool, a true testament to listening to the fans. Dark Moon was severely lacking variety and character of the ghosts you capture, and Luigi's Mansion 3 brought it back to its roots in this way. I really like the idea of all the hotel staff being the ones to haunt the hotel, much like the old residents of the original mansion. 
and they started getting a little crazy, you know, having pharaohs and pirates and kings. While, yes, I mentioned before this is creative, I don't think it works as well as just having Luigi facing off against the spirits of the hotel. That's another staple of what made the original flow so well. It felt like a real place that was really haunted. Just old residents of this once prestigious mansion refused to let their old lives go. They were heading down the right track, and then it just kind of started to get a little too crazy. While it's nice to have them back, I think the portrait ghosts were handled poorly compared to the original. In that game, as you explore the mansion, you happen to come across spirits in a particular room with their own puzzle to solve. It was so fun and exhilarating to walk into a new room and realize there was a new portrait ghost in here with their own puzzle to solve. A ghoulish woman who's brushing her hair and gets disturbed by the wind. A restless butler who is scared by fire. So much life and personality that ties directly into how you defeat them. You took care of them, went on the way. And then here in 3, they're presented as bosses of each floor, leaving Luigi to chase them up and down and clear the floor into the big fight at the end. Yes, they have a weakness that you need to exploit, but the puzzle aspect doesn't play as well when it's a boss fight. The first one made you feel like an intruder, with Luigi stumbling onto creepy ghosts usually minding their own business, and you needing to figure out how to exercise them from the home, for lack of a better word. This just feels better in so many ways, and seems true to how hauntings go in our world. You know, you walk into a room, something happens to be in there, and now you have to deal with it, versus a narrative that forces you to follow the ghost around. It's just not the same appeal. With all of that being said, I did enjoy the boss battles for what they were. I thought they were very cool, unique, and fun to take down. I loved throwing barrels into the mouth of the ship, or sucking up sand snakes. I particularly enjoyed the boss battle against Helen Gravely, the hotel owner. It's really interesting trying to toggle two different floors and unique challenges at once, making sure Luigi is safe while simultaneously trying to disable the lasers that are stunting his progress. The final battle against King Boo was also worth the wait. While I enjoyed the approach that was done in Luigi's Mansion 1 better, the boss battles that did feature in Luigi's Mansion 3 were done very well. As far as the gameplay is concerned, I was surprised with the difficulty of the puzzles at times. On occasion, I would get pretty stuck and left scratching my head, wondering what I'm supposed to do or how I'm supposed to move forward. It wasn't an unfair challenge. The whole game is perfectly doable without a walkthrough. Modern games tend to be a lot more forgiving and have a bad tendency to coddle and handhold the player. I think Nintendo is especially guilty of this. Probably because it's all about the money, and these kinds of things are usually designed with a demographic of all ages in mind, particularly younger children, to be able to play and make it through. Don't get me wrong, there was a lot of hand-holding in this game, but the moments where I did genuinely find myself stuck left me satisfied. It's no Zelda game, but it was formidable enough. Let's talk about the new mechanics. The big thing here is Gooigi. I can almost consider him another gimmick, along with the Poltergust, seeing as how all of the marketing seems to put the spotlight on him. He's even got as much space as Luigi does on the cover. Guigi isn't necessarily a bad mechanic. It's the best attempt at introducing multiplayer in these kinds of solo adventure games. He blows the water out of controlling Cappy, or being able to just waste all of your star bits. These actually just handicap the player and cause problems for the sake of letting your little brother stop whining and play with you. Both players have full control over their own character and have Luigi's full arsenal at their disposal. It is a problem how Luigi doesn't come until at least an hour or so into the game. Yes, while this is a natural progression for the game to unlock mechanics, in my case, I had my cousin sitting on the couch watching me play and waiting to join in on the promise of a second player being available, getting restless and irritated. A big part of the marketing was this multiplayer mechanic. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who encountered this problem of having someone wait around for it to start. I suppose they counter this issue by making the entire next floor centered on Gooigi, sending him through the gates and leaving Luigi standing there with nothing to do but watch the action. This happened far too frequently in the game, where Gooigi takes center stage and Luigi has nothing to do. If you're playing solo, it's fine, but co-op gets incredibly annoying in that regard. The best way to play the story is definitely single player. There's Scare Scraper and other modes if you want to have a multiplayer experience, but not the story. The new combat features, 
It left a lot to be desired for me. I've heard people say, It's so satisfying to slam the ghosts! I encountered the opposite effect. To me, there's absolutely nothing better than sucking them up and trapping them in their poltergeist. When you slam them and they just disappear, I don't feel like I've defeated them. They're ghosts, after all. They can't die again. Something about sucking them into the vacuum beats out any other alternative to fighting. And it's the whole point of Luigi's Mansion anyway. The plunger was a fine addition to the exploration. Sometimes it worked during combat, sometimes not. Obviously there were parts where you had to use it, but whenever it was up to me I just stuck with the vacuum. I get it, the first Luigi's Mansion, as great as it was, only had so much to do in combat or exploration. You light things up or you vacuum them up. They added some cool features as a way to mix it up, but I feel for the most part there wasn't enough variation from room to room to make you forget that you're using the same tricks over and over again. I felt that here, and I peg all of that to the exploration and collectible aspects of the game. But let me just save that for a second. As far as the design is concerned, this time around Luigi finds himself in a hotel working himself up each floor. I didn't entirely mind it. The system allowed for them to go out of the box with each floor and the chance to do new things each time, but I still prefer the non-linear layout from the first. It was much more rewarding for me to see the entire floor layout with so many locked doors, and needing to keep going back and forth and up and down all over the mansion unlocking and figuring out the answer to all the things that you keep passing with curiosity. There's less charm just moving up each floor. I get that some people might think it's similar by seeing the missing elevator buttons and saying, well there's progression there, you keep going up and up and up in the elevator. It's not the same as walking past the same doors over and over, constantly checking whether this is something I can access or not. The first game really made you feel like a resident. By the end of the game, you knew the entire mansion inside and out. Where each room is, how to get there, the game had you walk all over the place like you live there. Some of the floors in the hotel had room to explore, but others were just a quick visit, fight a boss, then move on. I also want to mention the cutscenes here, and I just think there was far too many. I like seeing cutscenes as much as anyone, but what I'm still seeing most of the game is a movie rather than actually playing it more than an hour into the game, I have a problem. Then you have this annoying little scene of Luigi putting the elevator button back every time you unlock a new floor. How on earth is he not used to the thing screwing itself back in by now? Honestly, that is just incredibly lazy, and it makes me as a player feel like I'm just working through pointless repetition rather than true progression. The first game didn't hold your hand every moment of the way like this. They threw you in the mansion. Your only hope is to figure it out yourself. It was you and Luigi and the mansion. Now you can't do anything without a cutscene or some long form of dialogue beating the nail down with a hammer. We get it, we get it. Although, yeah, you get it always talks no matter where he is. So, you have a full hotel to explore. Since most of the time there aren't any enemies around you, what is there to do? Why, collectibles, of course. You explore every nook and cranny to completion. Usually this leads to some big rewards, but I wouldn't exactly use that word in this case. Here you have the regular collectible money. It's been in all the Luigi's Mansion games. Cold, hard, cash, baby. The hotel is littered with it. Basically, everything you can touch in the game gives you some sort of change, and boy, they, this still haunts me, but I'll get back to that. Then there's the big boys, the gems. Each floor has five unique gems to collect, and these babies are well hidden. Some are obvious, yeah, but let me tell you, I dug through each and every floor to the best of my ability, and throughout the whole game, I only managed to collect all the gems on only one floor. They are hidden well. How do you get them? You search. The first problem you come across is that everything, literally everything, is interactable. Rooms are littered with stuff, just junk on top of junk on top of junk. Obviously, it encourages exploration. You want to try and find the hidden goodies the game has to offer. But taking on this challenge could be infuriating. Rooms can sometimes take up to 10 minutes just to clear out of everything, and even then you aren't left with much. Then you enter the next room, which more likely than not doesn't have any ghosts to fight, and then you just start back at square one. There's just too much to do and see and not enough reason to do any of it. Each and every room is filled with all kinds of nonsense to suck, blow, plunge, what have you. I found myself walking from empty room to empty room, clearing it out with the same tricks over and over again. 
I saw something fishy, I tried one of my five things to do it. Suck or blow with the vacuum, stun the light, shine the black light, plunge it, or try Gooigi. Rinse and repeat with every single item of notice over and over again with little combat to separate it. I understand this is how a game works, using the mechanics of the game throughout to solve puzzles or accomplish tasks, but the best kind of game is designed well enough to distract you from realizing you've been doing the same thing over and over, reinventing how you use things and throwing enough in between to keep it balanced. But we just mentioned three fails here, leaving you with far too much time of decorated emptiness, tons of rooms and different things that look cool but ultimately do nothing but spat out some money. Then you're walking into the next room and repeat until boredom forces you to take a break. All of this is rewarded with money, which is a completely and utterly useless gimmick. It's the same as the first. The more money you have at the end, the better your mansion is that gets built. I mean, yeah, okay, sure. But is it really worth all the effort that it takes? Absolutely not. They encourage you to destroy everything, and there's very little reward for doing it just more and more money. It would be one thing if money was worth more and more scarce around a hotel, where let's see, find bills or coins once in a while to help build your account. It would be more puzzle oriented with purpose. You see something and go, oh, this must have money. That way, it would be much more rewarding and satisfying to find the rarities scattered about and win the best mansion based on wit and merit, rather than how meticulous you were about taking the time to destroy everything. Literally everything spouts money. I can't stress this enough. The game sort of traps you this way. You start the game collecting money because it's all over the place. And the further you go, you can't help but keep going for bills and coins and pearls because they're shiny things for you to get before they disappear. And you've already gotten so much. How can you stop now? It's like a drug. You see it and you just have to get it. I'm running across the room for single coins. That's worth one. I felt like a dog with a fishing pole tied to me, forever chasing the steak on the line that I could never get. They dangle in front of you. If you wanted to do the money collecting right, then goodness gracious, you have your work cut out for you. Ultimately, it comes off as a cheap excuse for collectibles that tricks you into extending the game far longer than it needs to be. Maybe if you could do something, anything with all this stuff, it would be different. Like in Mario Odyssey, you collect the gold and purple coins to buy things from the shop. There's a reason and a reward for doing all of that work. I was addicted to completing Mario's costume collection because it was a satisfying and lockable formula. Collecting all that money for a lousy screen at the end? Pass. Absolutely pass. And it's annoying because I'm trying to play the game to its fullest and do everything that it has to offer, but I just ended up getting punished for it. I like experiencing full games and doing my best to be a completionist, but games like this make me hate it. I probably added half of my game time to this pointless collecting. I think it took about 14 hours for me to beat it, and I can honestly assume 7 of those hours was filler nonsense trying to collect this stuff. And that might even be generous when it comes down to the entire game just sucking up things for money and maybe, maybe seeing a ghost to fight once in a while. Yeah, I know later in the game, once you start entering rooms, there was a lot more ghosts, but by the time I got here, I was just hours and hours into Collectathon that I just didn't care to play anymore. It was over for me. I just wanted to beat King Boo and move on. Towards the end, I stopped caring and ran through it normally, and I enjoyed it so much more. I enjoy the scenery and the life that was put into the hotel, but it's time I'll never get back. Because of all of this, it just makes... Backtracking to find mist gems, an absolute nightmare. Everything resets and you have no idea where anything is, so you basically have to start deconstructing each room on each floor all over again. Needless to say, I quickly gave up on my gem hunt. I want to wrap this whole thing up nicely with my biggest problem with the game that becomes apparent immediately. Atmosphere. This is the very thing that makes Luigi's Mansion 1 so great, and what hurts Dark Moon in 3 the most. Let's take a look at the first game. You load it up. You hear this creepy voice introducing Nintendo. Nintendo. The mansion creeps in. It's dark, it's scary, gloomy, eerie. Crows 
Screech, lightning strikes. The sound effects are chilling. The music is mesmerizing. Still one of the greatest themes I've ever heard. You see Luigi poke his head through the front door, absolutely terrified. This is no standard Mario game. This is unlike anything Mario's ever done. Finally, Luigi gets his time to shine, and it's badass! He's your only comfort in this unfamiliar and unsettling environment. It was so jarring to see Luigi from Super Mario Brothers walking around a dark and spooky mansion with ghosts. The entire tone was bone chilling. Seeing a toad, a friendly familiar face in this horror house was a godsend. Obviously, three starts off bright and sunny. I don't actually mind this. I like the idea of the hotel being a seemingly normal resort by day and then turning into its true tantalizing self by night. And then how the menu changes from bright to eerie after you see the true hotel. But if you're gonna do it, you need to flip that light completely on its head. The game never loses its childish and goofy theme, even though the hotel went dark. Look at how the ghosts are introduced in Luigi's Mansion 1. <laughs> Saved by Gad. Absolutely terrifying. Now let's look at three. The enemies are goofballs. It totally ruins the aesthetic of what these games are supposed to be in the first place. Making jokes, playing around, wearing costumes, it's just too silly. Sure, it's like what a mischievous poltergeist would do, but you can add mischief to character without taking away presence. There is no weight or presence to these ghosts or the hotel at all. I used to walk around the mansion in fear of what might pop out. That entire sensation is absent from 3. This all also plays into how the first game is balanced compared to here. Look at how you walk into new rooms. It's dark, quiet. You hear the sounds of ghosts chattering as Luigi's breath slips through his chattering teeth. There are so many visual, musical, and atmospheric clues to let you know something is off and you know that there are ghosts here. You have to complete this challenge before turning on the lights. Ah, now the room is clear. You get the chance to explore before moving on to the new challenge in the new room. This juxtaposed with rooms you've previously cleared where it's bright and Luigi is happily whistling to the same theme that is so haunting in rooms that still have ghosts. It's okay here, you're safe. This beautiful transitioning is completely absent in 3, being replaced by the same look and feel room to room, whether ghosts appear or not, if at all. Yes, I can see slightly there are cues, but it is a poor, poor comparison to the first. And these things aren't even difficult to carry over. The first game really made you feel like you were clearing the mansion out of all of these ghosts, with rooms returning to normal after those that haunted it are disposed of. In Luigi's Mansion 3, ghosts just show up randomly, and they'll continually appear all over the hotel no matter how far you are. There's no real point to fighting them. It's not an RPG where you can level up. It becomes busy work, and unless there are purple gates to lock you in, you might as well not even bother. Yeah! Yeah! Way to go! Mario. Oh. 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 Come on! This way! Uh, 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 this way! Huh? Oh. Let's go! How would Mario have any idea where to go? He's been in a painting literally since the beginning of this game. Oh yeah! I'm coming, I'm coming. Jeez, who's the one who's been locked in a painting this entire time? I don't know what he's so anxious about. Every time he ever goes up against a ghost, he gets locked away again. That Mario. So annoying. If I ever see his face again, I swear. <laughs> Ooh. 
Wow, he's really rubbing it in your face here that this is a Mario series where you literally can't jump. I feel like companies nowadays are too worried about losing all demographic and stick to what is safe and appealing to everybody, no matter the sacrifice. What a mistake. The reason the first still lives on so strongly this day is because of the major risk and innovation it took. It was freaking scary! I understand wanting to appeal to children, but the first was made for children as well. I was five years old when the first game came out. It scared the living daylights out of me. That's what I loved about it. Humans, maybe especially kids, react more positively when their boundaries are pushed. We like challenge, especially challenge in fear. So people are more likely to enjoy something that scares them more because they feel like they've conquered something. There's a huge feeling of accomplishment for not only making it through, but enjoying it. The first Luigi's Mansion shines in this way. Without this atmosphere, the entire thing is knocked down multiple pegs from my position. I can't take it as seriously and therefore can't enjoy it as much. Nintendo has pushed these boundaries before, why not now? Overall, despite everything I said, I didn't hate Luigi's Mansion 3. It was certainly more back to form than Dark Moon, and there was a lot of fun and creative things to take from playing. I have never regretted diving into any world that Nintendo has produced, and any chance to rejoin some of my favorite creations, in this case Luigi and the Mario Brothers series, I welcome with open arms. Obviously a lot of work went into it, and no matter what happens in any Nintendo game, they never lose that charm that makes them what they are to this day. When I do reviews, I don't want to ever say if something is good or bad. I don't believe I ever have a right to say that about art. There are always people who pour their hearts and souls into what we see and enjoy, and so... Even if I don't particularly agree with the final outcome, there is always something to take from it. This is how I like to approach these sort of things. As a final say on the art I participate in, I leave it as, is this something I would welcome back into my life and experience? Luigi's Mansion 1? Absolutely, as I already have many times. Unfortunately for Luigi's Mansion 3, I would say no. I don't regret playing it, but my honest take after completing the game and saving Mario, Peach, and the Toads is that once was enough, and I do not intend on welcoming this game back into my experience. For me, Luigi's romp through the haunted hotel is done for good. Thank you so very much for joining me for the first official episode of The Art of Review. I plan on doing many more, with no particular rhyme or reason to what I review, just whatever I happen to see or watch or play or experience that I feel I have thoughts of worth to share. So stick around for more content.